welcome everyone to the ideal british parliamentary qualifiers we will do the quick orientation today and then we will take all the questions i hope my screen is visible to everyone okay so here we goes so indian debating league so we run india's biggest debating tournament which just concluded we have 3000 debaters that's primarily follow a unique structure that we have one versus one then we have the state teams then we have the or uh, the winning indian team but that works more on the wsdc structure here this tournament is primarily on the british parliamentary which serves as the qualifiers for U uk universities Oxford, Cambridge, LSE, uh, as you can see. What we also have is that we will do the sessions today, tomorrow, and day after tomorrow, and then you will have qualifiers, three matches that you play on fourth, and then you have a one more submission to do. Uh, this is again we has been associated with Harish Natarajan and other international coaches. You can find our our work on Instagram. You can watch their earlier content, like how they prepared, and these are the people who are. not just in the best of the best universities around the world they are being also the mentor to the national teams which is like you know the isds select the national team for india similarly there are parallel teams across the world so harish natarajan is the coach of hong kong which is the winning team for the wsds see this year 2022 and is also going to train for the next year uh now coming to the agenda what is we have so the flow of the program is that we will look at a what are the qualifier structure look like then what are the training schedule and then the core part as you know only five of you have debated till now out of 50 60 students i guess few have not joined which will be watching the recording is that what is the bp format look like once you are clear with the bp format then we'll look at the speaker's role for each and every uh role that you play with, within the team within the speaker part and then we'll look at what is the benches what is the role and responsibility the framework for the bp and any time if you have a question just virtually raise your hand also once the session is over then we'll take all the questions and the rest can join so the first thing first let's talk about what is there for all of you here so a we will do the training so i'm doing orientation today tomorrow day after day there will be more sessions taken by afreen and nitik sharma which will be focused much more on the debating also after that there will be a quiz this quiz on the 30th will not be say exclusively that that means that still you able to proceed to the next <laughs> round it's just that whoever it is could you please put your mic disturbance so there will be a quiz so there will be training today tomorrow day after tomorrow and then there will be a quiz then we will have three matches on fourth which will receive the schedule 10:30 to 4:30 you will have three british parliamentary qualifier and for each match you will get the oa or uh, in the matches and also a if you qualify over there that means you have the chance to debate uh, as part of team india at oxford lsc and the cambridge uh they will have both the tournaments uh one is online and the offline and then you can choose which you want to take on like if you are if the dates match you i guess london school of economics on 12th of february uh the one who are at the top of the leaderboard they will be invited first uh to become part of the team and uh go there physically at lsc on 12th of february if they for some reason of exams or not then they can go to oxford the other next will be invited that's primarily what it entails in terms of what we will cover and what we will consider to at the end goal now uh this is the format look like that we will have orientation we will have training and then the 30th we will have quiz again the quiz is not any way change your selection that you have learned in the say 28 29 just it's like a conclusive test that have you really absorbed that part it's an indication of how much work you need to do 
Now let's look at the core fundamental. What is the British parliamentary? And before British parliamentary, let's suppose a very basic. What is the parliamentary debate? Is that in each parliamentary debate, there's a house, and in the house, the government is proposing a bill. They are bringing some sort of change to the world. Correct? It could be passing a law. It could be like you know, like farm law, CA law, whatever it is. They bring some sort of motion to the picture, and then they are called the government, the proposition, the for the motion, and everything. And then you have the opposition, which primarily opposes what the government brings. So you have the motion, what you have to discuss. Team proposition brings to discuss, and the team opposition opposes it. That's purely the parliamentary debate. Now the British parliamentary is exciting because not just that you have two opposition, you know, sides, proposition, opposition. You have four teams, and there are two governments and the two opposition. That's the most interesting part as compared to all the formats that you will see, whether it's Asian parliamentary. WS DCS or your conventional debate one versus one. Now this is the structure look like that. Though you have you know two parts, the government and the opposition, but within the government there are two teams: the opening government and the closing government. And similarly in the opposition, you have opening opposition and then the closing opposition. So you will be, as I mentioned, that first you will become a team with your partner. Then when the matches happen, we will tell you. Are you a opening government? Are you a closing government? Opening opposition or closing opposition? You will be given a one role out of that. Now, once you're given a role out of that, then it's up to you that you know within your team who will go first. Is you gonna go first or your partner go first? That's your team preference. But as organizer, we will tell you that this is your motion, and this is your role. That are you a opening government? Which role you are playing? Is this part clear till here? Yes. Yeah, it is. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Now look at how the flows work. So the first half, you know, the government will speak. Always the government starts the debate the prime minister comes and bring the motion into the picture they will define in everything so the order goes the first person speaks then as you look at the arrow then the second person the leader of opposition speaks then the deputy prime minister then deputy leader of opposition and then vice versa it will keep going now comes the other part that what it primarily entails so uh when you're looking at the government part especially the first half so what you have to consider like this have already cleared like who is for who is against in this case you will have 30 minutes of preparation time which means that 30 you will be given the motion your side so the motion and are you going opening government closing government opening a position closing a position will be given 30 minutes prior in university is level sometime you will given 15 but here because you are school student you will given 30 minutes also in the tournaments the speaking time differs if it's a university level it goes to 7 to 8 minutes in this format we will have 5 minute for each speaker so each speaker will have 5 minutes and team obviously will have 10 minutes so the you know there are two speakers each speaking 5 minutes and 5 minutes uh generally because you know you will have 30 minutes only so the idea is that you converse with your team member rather than doing your own research and all because whoever is the adjudicator in your room they understand that this debate is not about your information it's about your core principle reasoning uh british parliamentary is much much more about core principle reasoning as compared to getting the facts right because no one considers that you will get the facts right in 30 minutes it's not like your other formats which are policy debates in case of policy debates you are given one month one years to prepare here there the expectation is much more that you will look at the data the stats here the expectation is much more on the fundamentally logic that you are able to draw what kind of uh, you know context you are able to set the mechanization able to set ask this is obviously the speaker rules the prime minister and the leader of opposition these are the name you can call them first speaker second speaker third speaker and the fourth speaker that's up to your preference uh, as i mentioned you will have 5 minute to speak now that's the most part 
this is primarily that what our team will do so look at the opening government opening government is the first and the third speaker what they do the first speaker the prime minister comes and he will explain because you are setting the agenda for the entire debate so you open the debate and give a comprehensive uh, a the motion definition what does it entail bit of context and what is the status quo and that's primarily a introduction of a case line so the motion is about say farm bill in india is being scrapped but let's suppose if today the prime minister modi was introducing us in the house he will tell he will tell like today we will you know bringing this farm law but at the same time what is the context that you know india is a country where 60 50% people are still uh, agriculture based farmers direct or indirect so that's like a context and then what is the status quo uh, you know that they are suffering for so many years no major reform has really happened so you're giving us context and within that context you're giving the status quo what is happening today and the status quo will talk about the challenges that exist today so that you can build a case that why this motion need to be introduced if there is no problem in the world there is no need of a change just because there is a sheer problem that's why you have to tell within the context of the status quo that there are certain challenges and this this motion that your team is trying to bring that will solve those challenges that's what this and then the further what you will draw is that why the motion that you are bringing why the change that you are bringing will have positive impacts on the world so constructive argument if not the major one at least you will give up summary that what your side will cover broadly that's like a comprehensive case line to start with the definition talk, talk about the challenges what you are bringing and also what your further speakers will cover that's a comprehensive case line you do that the first speaker do the second speaker of the opening government also will engage with the opposition so just what does engage mean so the prime minister speaks first then the leader of opposition do the same they will come they will listen to the definition given by the prime minister either they agree disagree you know prime minister has not done a blunder or is not a only one sided definition if it's not the leader of opposition likely to agree on the definition once they do that then they tell look we believe that these challenges exist in the status quo but at the same time what you are bringing is not going to solve them so you know the leader of opposition will have their own case line why they bring that this particular change is not going to be successful or is not something of uh, any relevance or it may be create a far worse world that the leader of opposition will do now when the deputy prime minister comes into the picture they have a context so a they in the same side also they have a context that the leader of opposition has delivered some sort of constructive argument so the deputy prime minister need to do some sort of counter arguments the rebuttals and the same applies to the deputy of leader of opposition that they will add they will further add their case line what the leader of opposition says that okay we will cover these points and they goes on to extend that but also fundamentally they will oppose prime minister and deputy prime minister both is this part clear the opening government and the opening opposition because that sets the fundamentals of the debate because if you are clear with that then only we will go to the closing government so i will take questions till here yes adru uh, go ahead yeah so is it important uh, you said that the facts need not to be correct so is it important that facts could be made up and like no 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 our... so i didn't say facts need to be correct i said that the in the british parliamentary the emphasis on the facts is not that much high but that doesn't mean that you can fabricate uh, you know facts because if you fabricate a fact and someone point it out then you lose the credibility and uh, you know why someone will agree with you ultimately it's a game of persuasion that you have to convince your adjudicator that you are speaking truth and you are the one who trying to bring the change or your side is impactful if you are quoting lies or you are figure out that you are you are quoting lies you are fabricating truth then it goes very against you the idea maybe let me try to rephrase this idea that 
look, when we talk about farm laws, so you can talk about number that, you know, 20% farmers done this, 20% are working on the sugar cane, you know, 20% of wheat, rice, this and that. That's one. Uh, but when you give argument, you can find that the opposition also give you further argument. For example, the government says that we are bringing farm laws because certain countries in the world, for say, US has a similar structure. And we believe US is a successful uh, farmer's country. And that's why it will going to be successful in, in India also. Because you are giving an example here that because this particular path or this policy has been successful in a particular country will also be successful and likely to succeed in India. Then the team opposition will say, that's not true. A, we have a lot of variation as compared to the US. We are not an evolved country. We are, you know, much more still uh, on say level one, level two of the farming. We are still very much manual. We don't have so much technologies. And also the nature of the market differs a lot. Uh, with a better example could be say China and it doesn't work in the China. I'm just giving, you know, hypothetical examples. So it's always easy to find like, you know, the counter argument. Here it's much more about the fundamental, like people need something. People really want to improve their, say, household incomes. And they will do whatever it takes. And that's why it's the role of government to at least try something. It may likely to fail, but at the same time, there is no alternative way because until unless we try, we can't really succeed. And this is the best time to change. Otherwise, it will take further and further years. So the reasoning is much more important as compared to your examples. That's all I try to mention. It's not that you can fabricate lies. Okay. Uh, yeah, Brihat Pari, please go ahead. All right. So when we mean a comprehensive case line, what exactly do we mean? Okay, the comprehensive case line. Think it this way that what is a case line entails? So for example, you have a book. Hmm. Uh, so the book covers that what you entirely will cover. Leave aside what you're speaking in your speech. Just think what broadly your major argument going to be. A, on either side, if you're the opening government, you will have a definition and definition will have subpart and then you will have core arguments, the reasonings. That's primarily cover up the case line that what you will cover, what going to be your key fundamental parameters on will you debate. Are you looking at improving the household income? Are you looking at providing, say, better infrastructure to them? What are your key pillars of your debate? That need to be clear to you. And you also need to know that what you are prioritizing over. So when you bring any kind of change, for example, let's talk about Agni Veer. When the government is bringing this particular change, you know, they will recruit through Agni Veer. They are bringing complexity. But at the same time, A, a lot of people will participate. But at the same time, a lot of people will uh, not able to get full-time job, say, after three or four years. So there is a certain uh, prioritization happening. They're giving chance to a lot of people, but ultimately, if you're going to succeed, if that's the definition of a government job is the definition of success. So that prioritization, your case line need to cover. Uh, Briha, yes, if that's clear. Saira Litwitz, please go ahead. Yes, sir. So my first question is... Um... If we don't have access to the internet and we get a motion like this house supports the 18th amendment, so how are we going to write on, if we, uh, write on it if we don't even know what the 18th amendment is? Yeah, so in British parliamentary debates, if there's a key word which you think is not being, you know, commonly understood word, like for example, 18th amendment is something that I don't know, correct? In that case, the adjudicator, the core team need to give you a info slides or they give you info in, uh, about the motions. So you can ask the convener or the team in case us that please explain this particular key term to me. Okay, sir. Because the idea of a British parliamentary is to have a motion which is very common in nature. It's not about to ask for your exclusive information because the time is not given for you to do exclusive research. Yes. Summer Singla, please go ahead. Uh, yes, so, so my question is kind of related to what Saira asked. So the motion which uh, you will provide us, will it be specific to the British uh, condition right now only, or it will be like, it will be a very general worldwide topic? Oh, it's a very general worldwide. It could be about India. It could be about economics, politics, obviously at your level and all of you are school level. So, you know, is that the context? The British parliamentary is just the name. Uh, correct. Is that, okay. you know, 
Yeah, uh, I just can't say that. Yeah, it, it yeah. has nothing relation to the uh, British or the UK itself. It's just that a in the university level, this is the most common format across the world. In the schools, a majority of the UK university do uses. Mm, so that's the only context. There is no thing that the motion or the topic going to be related to the UK in any way. Okay, thank you. Okay, if that's clear, then Lavanya, please go ahead. I, I just wanted to ask, is there any uh, similarity between British parliamentary and APD? Like, can we use terms like constructive stakeholder analysis? Yes, yes, very much. Look, so the essential, the fundamental debating almost remain the same. Constructive is is the same. POI, uh, you know, POI will come. So they will remain the almost same. Okay, thank you. It's just that the structure that in APD, WSDC, you have only, you know, one team opposition, one team uh, proposition, you know, the opposite sides. In here, you will have two teams. That's the fundamental biggest difference. Also, the difference lies in the closing part. And that's why I will cover the closing part. So, okay. so that's the reason I try to cover that. You should be clear for the first part. Looks, the first part is very much similar to your general APDs, your WSDC. Harish, JH, please go ahead. Uh, so the way to convene with our like our counterparts, like the closing opposition and the opening opposition together to frame our arguments. So sorry, could, could you repeat it? Like we get to know which team is the closing up opposition and the opening opposition. So do we get to convene before the debate so we can construct our arguments in that manner? Uh, if your question is primarily that you will get your sites. Yes, you will get your sites 30 minutes prior. Uh, no, so my question is, will we be able to like uh, talk up and meet it up prior, like, meet up with our like counterparts before the debate? Oh, will no, no, no. No, no, they are, they are separate teams. Look, obviously, uh, consider you are part of the training. So most of you will be doing the debates with, uh, together, but there is no need to do uh, meet your opponents. Sure. Okay. Uh, with that, Anika Bhargav Mathur, please go ahead. Yeah, could you give like an example of what is included in a comprehensive case plan? Because that's not quite clear to me. So look at any motion. So for example, you are the team proposition. Let me just find a, maybe a good motion. Okay. So I'm going to share a one motion in the chat. This house would nationalize big tech corporations. Uh, no, uh, currently there is nothing shown on the screen. We are just looking at the first half because we have covered the first half. And as Areka mentioned, like let's understand the first part. If the first part is clear, then automatically goes to the second part. So this is this house was nationalized big tech corporation. And look at, we are looking at just from the team uh, opening government sides of point of view. And just look at the screen again. What does opening government actually means? So consider that you are a part of a team, which means that even you're a single speaker, your speeches together should be comprehensive, which means that in case we're talking about opening government, the prime minister and the deputy prime minister are part of the same team. That means the prime minister say something and even if they are not able to cover that up, the deputy prime minister should take those words. That's the first part. So the case line is primarily for a team. And then you break that within that particular case line, some part will be covered by the prime minister, some time will be covered by the deputy prime minister. Is this part clear? If that's clear, now look at what we have said. What should have opening government overall should do. They open the debate and set it up and deliver a comprehensive case line. The rebuttal part is something which is not part of the comprehensive case line. That's a position, that, that's a counter argument. So now look at the comprehensive case line for this particular topic. So first, we're talking about this house was nationalized, the big tech corporation. So, you know, currently these big tech corporation like Facebook, uh, Google, Amazon, Apple, all are, primarily private companies are being owned by individuals, whether it's, you know, rich or whether it's part of the stock market. 
That's the first. So what you need to do, you need to define it. You need to tell the definition of what does a nationalization means. Who are we talking about US government? Who that nationalization means? That's the first part. The key terms within that. Then ideas, what is the big corporation, big tech corporation? And how you differentiate between a tech corporation and a big tech corporation? Will you say a company below a billion dollar revenue is not a big tech company? What are the threshold? So first is the definition itself that you cover because all your argument derives from that. So your definition need to be very crystal clear that, you know, what you're saying, that's the first part. Then comes the idea that what is the problem? What you are trying to solve? You are trying to do nationalization, but why? That should be covered here. So you will talk about, look, these tech companies have become so much big that they are stopping the innovation. I'm just giving one case line. So you need to, there could be multiple problems that you have to really think by your own. So you're setting that context that we live in a world where majority of these big tech companies control the 70% IT infrastructure of the world. They control our laptops, they control our mobiles, they control what we search, what social media we have. So they have a huge control over us. And they have a control, not just uh, say what we consume, they have a control on our economy, they have a control on also on our political views because ultimately they deliver the views on us. Look at the case of Twitter. If they ban a particular person like a Trump or a presidential election, we will not be able to get the information. So they have a huge amount of power. So you talk about that. That's the first, the context setting. And then you tell about the status quo that this is happening for the last year. And within the status quo, you tell the challenges. That's why it's bad. It's bad for, say, politics. It's bad for uh, democracy in general. Because people should decide not the big powers. And, you know, the part of the big powers is that only the few technocrats or the people who are running the company, the techies deciding things, which is not the ideal way. Do they decide who to, like, for example, in case of Twitter, have they decided who should be banned and how? What are the criteria behind saying we will ban Trump? That is not crystal clear and has people agreed? It's just that the few tech corporations. So this is first part, just the definition. And then you will tell, A, why we are nationalizing? Then how will we nationalize that the model? And then your constructive arguments in the favor of nationalization. That ultimately the problem that you set up initially, the challenges that you mentioned in the status quo, that need to be solved What what you are saying. That we will do this. We will ensure through our case line, through our solution will be solved when we nationalize the tech corporation. Now, this is the case line. Now, within that, what you cover, that will become your speeches. Uh, who has this question? Is that clear to that person? And we will cover, like, case line is a very exhaustive thing. You will cover, and we will do the demo debates and also, you know, maybe if we get a time on, on the last day. Okay, if that's there, then Advik Kusum uh, Kar, if, if I pronounce it correctly. So, uh, Advik, is there a time gap between the successful speeches? Uh, so, you will, so for example, if I'm speaking as the prime minister, I deliver my five minute speech as the second speaker after me, you can take a gap of say 30 seconds to one minute. You can ask the adjudicator, like whoever going to be in your room that give me, you know, 30 seconds, one minute, but not more than that. Got it. Thank you. Uh, Dia Raj, Ra, Ranjit, that's correct. Um, suppose you're second gov and your model doesn't align with first gov. Then do you still have to, uh, then do I, you construct on I, it? I'm coming to the second government, okay? Okay, okay. That, that I've not covered. Yeah, that's the reason. Like, I, I really want people to figure out that the photo is the first half. Uh, yeah. Punya Khemani, please go ahead. Yeah, so basically I'm familiar with the WSTC format. So there's like a defined structure that the first speaker um, sets up the debate and comes up with two arguments, the second rebuttals and then the third argument. So is there a particular number of arguments or constructives that the opening government or the opening opposition can um, follow or n number of them could be there? Uh, look, it's always very much context uh, dependent. It's not like always hard coded. It A, depends on your speech and all. But for the first, uh, say the prime minister, the two arguments are enough. The two constructive arguments are enough. Arav Bardhan, please go ahead. Will POR, can POIs be asked the, in the middle of the speech or at the end of the speech? Uh, so, okay, so though I'm covering, we should cover it the later, is it? 
if the speeches are for five minutes, the PUIs are between first, the first minute and the last minute is called as the restrictive time. You can't ask PUI between that. Other than that, you know, one minute onwards to the fourth minute, you can ask PUIs. Okay, it you. works similar to your WSDC if you follow that. Uh, Ran Vijay Roy. Yeah, so I basically have a couple of questions. Uh, number one, when you say that the opening governments, the opening opposition is going to be engaging with uh, the opening government, could you like please clarify what engaging means and what refutation means and how you're distinguishing between the two? Because I'm rather unfamiliar with this format, to be honest. So in the engagement, the rebuttal is part of the engagement. What does engagement mean that Look, let's suppose there are only two simple debate. I'm speaking proposition and Ranvij is speaking against the motion. Now, one could be that we come prepare before the match at delivering my speech independently to you. I give three arguments, you deliver three arguments. You look, for example, in case of the same topic, this house would nationalize big tech corporation. So I talk like why we should nationalize big tech corporation. I just give three constructive arguments, correct? And you say, no, we should not do... Uh, nationalization, we should let these companies run being privately owned because this is so and so good because, you know, it's a competitive market, it's it's a capitalistic world, it's created innovation, this and that. But we have not engaged means that I'm not countering you. Look, in debates, it's not just about giving your own argument, it's also about a comparative that I have to prove that my arguments are good. Also, I have to equally prove that your arguments are not good. That's an engagement. Right. If I just so, so, talking about my speeches, my argument, that's not engagement of a debate. Engagement is that I listen to Ranvijay in the first speech, and then who is my second partner in the second speech, they will counter Ranvijay. Look, Ranvijay, you talk about these constructive arguments, but we believe they are fundamentally flawed because what we're talking about innovation, when ultimately people are not able to get the benefit of it. For example, talk about pharmaceutical companies. Uh, in this case, the big tech corporation, again, uh, that's another definition because we are not talking about it. But I challenge your definition. That's it. Even pharmaceutical companies we, can be big tech. And uh, what is the ultimate purpose of any tech? Is it serve the society? And these companies are making it so much costly that the common people are not able to afford it. And even if they are innovating at excellent pace, if people are not able to utilize them, what's the need of that for the society? And that's why we believe that it should be nationalized. That's I'm engaging with your. So that engagement is counter argument is that rebuttal. Is that clear? Yes, sir. And um, just one last thing: when you're part of the same team and on the same side, of course, like what what are you going to do? Are you like are you going to deliver a comp? Uh, like, are you going to say the same things as uh, the previous person did, or are you just going to like sure. bring something Perfect. new to the table? Yeah. So in case of opening government, as I mentioned, that there are two team members, okay? So the one is the prime minister and there's a deputy prime minister. So the prime minister goes, they will define the motion. The definition is primarily the responsibility of a prime minister. Definition, context, setting, everything. Even sometimes the model comes that the prime minister has to do. Then they have to add that my side will cover these three arguments and out of that, I will cover one. Correct. They need not to be very explicit, but they will cover one or they just introduce something. They say that we believe because innovation is not equivalent to the betterment of the society. Even just, you know, one line or two liner. Then the leader of opposition speaks and then the deputy prime minister comes. So the, what is the role of a deputy prime minister? A, the deputy prime minister can start with opposing the leader of opposition, the engagement part that I mentioned, that they spend out of five minutes, the initial two parts, just countering the leader of opposition, that the leader of opposition talks about these, these, these arguments. And I believe why these arguments are basically flawed. What are the problem with them? Then I will say that my prime minister talk about this and let me iterate. So you start from what, where the prime minister has concluded and then either you add totally new argument or you add new. So prime minister added something, introduced something, but you're going to elaborate them further as a deputy prime minister. You elaborate the argument raised by the prime minister or you add your own constructive arguments on the table. Great, thank you so much. That answers my question. Okay, with that, let me ask uh, 
Manaswini. Uh, sir, will we be allowed to use the internet for uh, gathering resources for the debate? Uh, look, it's an online debate. So you can, you know, ideally it was not, you know, supposed to use internet, but you can use the internet, but consider this like you have 30 minutes. Out of all 30 minutes, it's up to you to utilize because it's, it's really impossible for us to gauge that, you know, stop you from using internet because you anyway will be online. The idea is that within the 30 minutes, how will you spend your best time? So in case of BP, what people do is that they write their own reasoning and they discuss with your team members. And that itself goes with the 30 minutes. And as I mentioned earlier to someone, that generally the BP formats are not very uh, exclusive in nature that required any, say, specific sort of information to be there. It's very general in nature so that even if you don't have a particular information, a piece of information, you can very much debate. Okay, sir. And uh, will we be also given a curriculum to study before the debate? Uh, so we will cover the formats. There will be like, this is not like World Scholar Cup that we will tell you what is the theme. Uh, correct. It can be broad. But at the same time, we will what we will do, we will give you a lot of motions that you can think of. Also, we will do a demo debate. So you can watch a debate on your own. Okay, sir. Thank you. Sure. Okay, perfect. So now I'm going to move to the, the question that someone asked. Oh, okay, my bad. There are two more questions. Uh, is it okay if I take your question after the closing? Because I want to conclude at 7. Then I can take all the questions because some student has to leave by 7. I want to conclude that part. Uh, okay, so perfect. So here we goes. Uh, so the first part is clear to everyone, and this is part of like a APDs and all the opening government. Now, what is the closing government? The interesting part, as I mentioned, in the British parliamentary that within the government there are two sides, and they are competing with each other. The opening government and the closing government are both on the same side, but they are different teams. And they are competing with the, each other. Also, just as the output of the result, what will happen? That there will be a ranking. That out of the four teams, the opening, there will be given marks. That three, two, one, zero. The one who will come at the first will get the three points. The second, two points. The one point and the zero point. That means the opening government, the closing government is also competing with each other. So what is the difference between them? That's the very essential and very interesting part. The order of the speaking similarly goes same, you know, third, fourth, the member of the government comes, member of government is the first speaker of the closing government, and then this vice versa order keep on going. Now look at what, what the closing government, this is your closing government, the member of government and the, so basically the fifth and the se seventh speaker is co called as the closing government together as a team. They will share extensions. I guess that may be the new term, the people who have done WSDC or the uh, APDs prior. Extension is, is the key term over here. And, and we will talk about extension here further. And obviously you should go back and if not clear, then come back tomorrow and ask to the our team again extension, because that's the key difference between uh, APD and the British parliamentary debate. The exclusive argument. This is simple. Do not knife your opponent bench. What does it mean? It means that Though you are a different team, but don't counter. So before you, the opening government would have said something. Let's support stay on the same topic that this house would nationalize big tech corporation. They will have given some argument. They will have given some context, the challenges. That was the opening government has done. Now the member of government, obviously, they will speak. They can't say the same exactly as prime minister, but they have a one context that they can't oppose the first opening government. They can't say that my opening government said something like that, and that's untrue. They can't counter them. They have to counter only opposition because they are still on the government. That's the knifing. When you oppose your own side, that's knifing. If you say that the prime minister spoke about this, but this is not true, or this is not important, you can prioritize you know, subtly, but you can't say that they are incorrect. They have not spoken what is to be understood. That's the knife. And knife is for both the uh, government, the, the closing uh, parties, both the government and the closing. Don't knife your opening bench. That's the first thing. And obviously, now 
come the extension part like what is extension so extension is that the debate already has happened the first half already would have covered some argument from both the sides now if there is no extension then what will you do it you just could reiterate what already has been spoken then it just become up versus like you know one team versus one team so what is the role of the second side on the opening side that they will add something new to the table that's the extension so when the team opening government say something they give a case line that case line will emphasize on something they may focus on lack of innovation that could be their key uh, constructive that's their core essence of their uh, case line that we looking at that the nationalization might uh, improve the success chances of the innovation that's one or it could be that ultimately as purpose is to serve the society that's a prioritization so the extension means that you bring a flavor you bring something on the table which the opening government has not emphasized so you adding a new layer to the debate obviously from the same side that we want to nationalize even the closing government will talk about that we want to nationalize it's just that they will talk about for more reason additional reason to nationalize which is kind of different from the opening government and you need not to say that you know the initial argument the reasoning the opening government gives that still hold true also you say that what we are saying that also true and where you are competing is the prioritization that the judge has to say that the closing government has something which is much more impactful so it's the same what what matters the society the, what matters the society is that we have you know huge amount of innovation or what what matters the society is that the innovation should go to the last leg of the society the poorest people or should we have less inequalities that's the goal of the society so that's the extension and then obviously the engage with the both oo and co means that you always have to engage with your opposition so you as a closing government was engage with your opening opposition and the closing opposition that same goes for your last team and then is primarily you know you will present your case line and the weighing is primarily that when the last speakers the whip from the government and the opposition will come before them so much has already been spoken for them they need to tell look this much has been spoken but we believe that out of all this this is what we have spoken and that's much more impactful that's much more a uh, powerful that's much more a priority to solve and that's what matter to the people you have to showcase the impact of your side of your first half of your side uh, i will take questions no worries and uh, this is primarily that if you win then you will likely to go to say oxford union debate there physically same go to london school of economics now i will open the floor for all the questions that are there so let's go one by one let's go with amin um yes so um as this says that this bb qualifiers it gives us three chances right to go to oxford cambridge and to either of these ones so how does that how, what are those chances except the most common one that is the debate and what does the quiz mean oh no a i i guess three chances means basically three matches there is no other you know way you have to debate because it's a debate tournament there is no other way and what about the quiz yeah quiz quiz is add on to the debate look so, so there will be a quiz on 30th but that's uh, in any way not decide will you qualify or not it just to help you to absorb the material that for example we're talking something i talk about knife correct hmm. some might have understood it correctly some not when we do a quiz on 30th when you get to know that this is a correct answer or not it just give you a reflection that i have okay. understood it correctly or not yeah. and uh, another question is uh, what's the main difference between opening government and closing government and same with like opposition as well opening opposition and closing if that's the right yeah. yeah yeah the fundamental part is that the team uh, in the first half the opening one whatever they bring to the table is new to the table correct there is no context to the table look for we are we are discussing something now if people comes after you they ask the same question as you like how how people like people will judge them you know they were not listening 
if you ask me a question and the same question being asked by someone like a uh, uh, Kevin, I say Kevin, you are not listening to the debate. Correct. You understand. And that's the closing part. Need to focus what has been spoken in the first part, and then need to new dimension to that. So the biggest roles and responsibility of the closing part is that listen what is happening in the first part, and a add something new to that, and then do a comparison that what we spoke versus what they spoke. Okay. Yeah, Dhruv, please go ahead. Yeah. So will we get the recordings of these lectures on? Yes, the yes. All the recordings will be there on the YouTube by tomorrow morning. You know, after one day, next day. Yeah, and can we leave since I have to go somewhere? Yes, very much. We are covered with the session. It's just that we have Q and A's. Okay, Dhruv is there. Sai Ra Litwitz, please go ahead. Yes, sir. So if the opening government and the closing government have some ideas. For example, in the motion which you gave, it was like we have included three points. So, if the opening government has already used up all of those three points, which the closing government also has, so how do we make sure that we have something which is unique and won't be used by the first part of the government? Okay, so a obviously look. So in the thirty minutes, you don't know what they will speak. That's true. Correct. So for example, you are the closing government. And I'm the opening government. We are preparing together. Uh, preparing together means like at the same time. And I say something which you were thinking that I might speak. That's what you are asking for. In that case, obviously, it's your responsibility. Then you have to change your uh, line, which means that you have to think a what something that I have missed. Look, ultimately, my team has only ten minutes. I can't cover the universe. There always will be something which you can add on, and there your you know. priorities your understanding come to the picture that what you can add the judges understand that it's a challenging for the closing part to come with a new content but at the same time you have to bring something because that's the challenge lies and because you have a three matches so it's very much that in few matches you will play the opening and the few matches you play the closing part so it's you have to cover overall okay sir uh if that's clear then avir singh please go ahead Yeah, I just had a doubt. I was just asking uh, for selections. Are we selected individually or by our team? Uh, so we will look at individual scores. Okay, thank you. Uh, Lavanya, please go ahead. I just wanted to know about like the process. Let's say we've been selected for these qualifiers, sure. or let's say or Oxford. What's the next step after that to actually go there? so first you will have the three matches on 4th of december after that there will be a standings standings means that how many so at best your team can get nine points correct if you win all three matches you are the number one team in all your matches you have the nine points or it could be the zero if you lose all the matches so there will be a standing after the fourth day basis that we will invite the top teams uh, correct and we will see that there will be 30% like you know We'll invite five to ten teams for the second round, which is the case line submission. Even if you, let's suppose, clear the case line submission, you become part of the team, and part of the team in a preference. There will be top three teams that we picked, which are invited to go to the LSE. And when you, so for example, your LSE is for the first tournament out of all them. The others will happen after that. So LSE is physical on twelfth of February. we will work out with you if you have the timings clear with you or uh, to go there in terms of your logistic you know visa issue and all but again that will all happen once you clear those rounds and let's suppose the top 3 teams are for some reason or the top 6 debaters are not able to go then invite the second part like you know the fourth team the seventh and the eighth speakers okay perfect uh, if that's clear then let me ask uh manaswini litwits oh uh, yes sir your hand is raised okay you don't have a question uh, i forgot to lower it no issue uh, breha puri um all right so so my doubt is that is this competition you know um, specified according to the age groups or something oh it's 8 to 12th all together ha huh. okay grades not age 
All right. Understood. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Jia. Yeah, I was just wondering. Um, are all the three interview? I uh, not interview. Sorry, are all the three uh, debates going to happen on fourth itself, or are they on different days? Yes, uh, on the same day. After subsequently, like first, second, third, on the same day. Okay, so the question I had is that it's a working day. Right? So a lot of us at school then. Fourth December is a Sunday. Oh, it is. Okay, I'm sorry. My mistake. <laughs> no, we understand all of you are in schools. <laughs> I'm very sorry. My mistake. Thanks a lot. No worries. Uh, Ranvijay Roy, please go ahead. Yes, sir. So here's my question, sir. Say you are the government or the opposition whip, sir. Realistically speaking, I mean, there's always a baseline argument to it, bit, right? So that's been covered, and we don't really have the time to to like research facts and stats. So realistically speaking, pretty much everything's been covered by then. So. What really is the role of the whip? Is he supposed to like deliver a comprehensive statement of everything that's been said? Is he supposed to pick out the best, or is he expected to take on the extremely challenging task of still bringing something new to the table? So that's my okay. that's my question. So uh, I, I find the whip is the most interesting part of the debate. Uh, look, the whip in essential sense means whip, correct? So you understand what does the whipping means? Is that, and you are true. Look, whip is someone who will comes at the end of the debate. and almost everything has been spoken before them so uh, it's always not you know ask for them to introduce something new to the debate new to the debate what is asked for them is a they have followed the debate very closely so they are able to summarize it so how will i as a whip debate correct i will take a give in the initial 2 minute give a summary that you know till today or till till here these are the argument being spoken from the both the sides correct you give some sort of summary initially and you tell like my opponent talks about these three things let's suppose whatever the x number of argument comes from the opposition your idea is to iterate the counter argument to them some counter argument already been delivered to your opposition so then you need not to repeat them but you need to understand out of the three constructive argument given by the team opposition whichever side is your uh, you know opposition is you need to identify that out of them which one is the most important and which is at that point of time is the one which can make them win your responsibility as to whip is to counteract that you have to prove that that's not true because that's the first uh, rebuttal that you do you have to break it. it's like you know it's like a real sort of war happening and this is like a wall that they have created so you have to break the most important wall you can talk about you know breaking all the things but first you have to prove that their core argument or the one which has not been countered how you will counter that that's the first role you have to do and then obviously you will conclude from your side that because so and so we have spoke about these and what our side has spoken about is much more impactful is a something on terms of weighing in terms of comparison that they have spoken something and we appreciate that but at the same time in the real world what we say deserve much more value because we are looking at people's life we are looking at people's money you know whatever those parameters you say that our parameters our metrics are much more important are much more impactful to the world and that's why we win this debate our side win the debate our side kind of solve the problem for the world because they are on the hypothetical ground their assumption doesn't hold true uh, their fundamental flaws in their sides you have to showcase the flaws the errors in those sides and iterate the good side the good argument from your your side right so so one last tiny little thing so you have three matches on the fourth right and a set of speakers get carried forward to seventh right yes so and final selections are made from the seventh from one yes, match sir. on the seventh right yep yes thank so you so much will, uh, yeah so we will cover the seventh part what will happen in the case line submission ishan please go ahead uh, so on the 4th december when the qualifier has been conducted Uh, at the same time, there's a ZIO Olympiad, uh, which is on informatics, and that's from two to five. So, is it possible that the qualifier can be, uh, preponed or the timings be changed a bit? Uh, it's very difficult because these matches run parallelly. Hmm. So two to five, you have something correct. Yeah. I will check with my team. You know. Ideally, let let's see. I guess there's a one third match will, will clash. 
uh, but uh, I would check with team because it, these matches run parallelly, and you know what yeah. happens that there are breakout rooms. Let's suppose ten matches happening, and yeah. all teams have the same motions. If we yeah. change your timing, then obviously you know either we have to change your motion. In that case, your yeah. team will say, "Look, our motion was difficult and all." But anyway, we'll we'll, we'll try to work it out. So you've informed us. Let me just check with the team and what we can do about it. Thank you, sir. Okay, uh, Avir Singh, please go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I just had one last question. Um, I just wanted to know, like, what will we be judged on? Like, what will be, what, how many points? Like, what's the maximum points a speaker can get? And like, what are we basically judged on in our speeches? Yeah. So, though in a British parliamentary, it's primarily about your content, correct? So the matter, manner, method, and the style has less coverage. It's like only say twenty percent. So the matter is your content. manner and the method so the method goes 20% and the rest is 40 40% in terms of the speaker rubrics we will share that uh, maybe in the next session and all but it's okay. i'll look leave aside everything the fundamental thing is that are you able to convince your judge that your are you persuasive enough so even more than the point the idea is that are you really persuasive uh, in terms of proving your point what does it mean that it's not just that you introduce something to the table maybe you bring a very interesting point of you know on the table but you have not really elaborated if you have not really sort of presented it well it's, it's you're not likely to win but i guess that part we will cover uh, in the next sessions that what going to be your rubric stands for okay thank you uh shad is uh, that's the way uh yes i had a question if we'll be given like a list beforehand to because if we are getting the topic dispensed by 15 minutes prior the debate, 30 minutes 30 yeah 30 minutes. minutes so i think if we get a list prior like maybe a hundred list of some topics oh, yes that, yeah. yeah we will we will share so look so we can parts. have an have an idea we can have keynotes for that so we can scheme how we present ourselves right because many topics can be controversial and we don't have any idea then because debates are like prolonged right that's why you no know, make sense we will cover and we will also do a demo debate with you so you have a a better idea to really sort of look upon how to go the, for these debates and don't worry look even if it's a very controversial we will not try to cover controversial even if it's a very difficult topic it's a comparative uh, which means that is a comparative difficult for everyone correct it's not like you know if you, we are all in the same match and it's difficult for everyone exactly because we are a similar age so so, so it's always a, the good part is the debating is a comparative it's not like you know comparison happening among all of us uh jia please go ahead yeah so my question was when we're doing the qualifiers itself will we be having partners uh i guess i've covered that the idea is that in a bp you will have in each team you will have two members yeah uh, when you have enrolled sorry go ahead you're saying something no no so i actually did get that part so what i was wondering was that when we go to the um if we do go to the finals we won't be going with the same partners probably right that's not yeah, uh, yeah correct that's from right. the from the 4 to 6 we will look at 4 to 7 we will look at the speaker scores yeah yeah thank you uh briha puri uh yes so i believe that somebody has asked this question already but i request more clarification so let's say that the motion is about a topic that i don't know about or perhaps i'm unaware about because it's not sure. possible to learn everything so and in those 30 minutes um, what do we do if there's no internet allowed how do we research a look so one is a definition that, that there is a some word within the motion that you are not aware about correct that's the fundamental thing that can happen go wrong in those cases the convener or the chief adjudicator whatever you call the organizer you have a very much a right to ask for the clarification or some sort of info slides you can ask them to clarify motion e to four statements which clarify the motion sorry yeah with that the last question for today i mean please go ahead i mean You have a question? I uh, know I don't think I load my hand. I'm sorry. Okay, so that means we don't have a question. So thanks everyone for joining us.